Boy, do we have a lot to get into. There's the police officer uh, from uh, Albany who's been arrested, um, who will not be charged with the killing of a person on Lincoln Avenue, uh, but was charged with um, soliciting a prostitute. Yeah. It's a crazy story. Um, We'll get to that coming up. Uh, And then, of course, there is this horrible uh, murder that is uh, that is being investigated. Police believe now the grandmother who was missing, uh, they believe they have uh, recovered her body. However, uh, from what we understand, it is a mutilated body. And I use that word. Um, we'll, it's bad. Yeah. This is really bad. They to, do have to. To the point where I think they are, they're still trying to confirm the identity However, they believe that the woman has been found at this point. Chief Williams will be in studio this morning uh, to discuss a lot, including a video that we had obtained yesterday that is now circulating uh, quite a lot on social media, uh, a video that it looks as if, and we've not been able to confirm the authenticity of the video, but it looks as if, you know, today everybody's got one of these ring or one of these doorbells that uh, records uh, security. And it was posted yesterday that uh, uh, someone had posted and shared with with us a video of someone pulling what looks like maybe a body, loading it into a vehicle. Yeah. And they claim that this is the residence uh, where all of this went down on Sunday night. And as you mentioned, uh, due to the they want to confirm they will be uh, turning over the remains of both the 87 year old victim that was found in the home at the time and the, the uh, what they believe to be the 90 year old woman to the medical examiner this this morning. So the first victim was the landlord. Uh, I believe I don't the know. The second who, victim uh, they're claiming they believe and none of this right. has really been confirmed. Yet. They have to confirm the, uh, the second victim or at the very least the person who's missing, although they've now said they think they. They have her. The second victim would be the person who has been charged, his grandmother. Right? That's what they believe, yes. Yeah. Boy, what a uh, terrible story. What is going on here? I don't know. It's, I, it's been a, know. I'll tell you one thing. Hits off to the UPD because uh, it's been a you know busy weekend for them. You know, uh, I believe uh, assisted by the sheriff's department as yeah. well. I mean, I, th- I think that this has been quite a, um, since Sunday, this has been, this has been something. And then there's the, uh, so we'll get details. Oh, and I'll bring one more uh, element into this. Uh, uh, how do you know? This uh, this reminds you of what? The, the Bumbleo case, right? I was going to say Second that, but I didn't in, want to uh, say that. Second yeah. in how many years? Yeah. Five years or so. Uh, where it ends up just uh, horrific, a horrific crime scene. So the question would be, how do you handle, how do we handle it as as members of the community? So you see somebody who you clearly feel is crazy. But you don't really feel that that person is someone who's going to cause anyone real harm. And then they slap. They snap. And and, uh, I want to say, allegedly at this point, we really don't... uh, Well, somebody did that. Somebody did this. Yeah, we don't know exactly. (laughs) The person that uh, that police feel uh, uh, is the person who I, I believe was... Injured, ran into a telephone pole on Sunday uh, or Monday morning and is uh, is actually in custody and is being guarded by uh, by police. They say at this point he cannot talk. That was as of last night. Anyway, um, so I had heard from another person yesterday who uh, the, the man that police have in custody, this person said that they came in contact with this person, knows this person, and has attempted over the last few weeks, at the very least in, in, in the past, to assist this person, helped him get a job. Um, he had a job at a local restaurant. Um, and just a few nights ago, uh, had an episode to the point where he had to be taken out of the restaurant. He was yelling all of these things. And this person took this this person home. So, I, I mean, just take for one moment and think about the people that you come in contact with. And if mm. there's anyone that you come in contact with and, and all of a sudden there's a bell going off in your head saying, wow, that could be, uh, you know, Bob. I, I, I really wouldn't be surprised if Bob were to be the one that would go uh, would go crazy. 
So, and and then you reach this point where you where you you kind of have to look yourself in the mirror and say, God, I, if I call this in, it's really nothing. He's not going to do anything. He's not, or she's not. They're not somebody who's harmful. They're not going to hurt anyone. But when, and I will tell you that this person is looking at himself in the mirror saying, I should have called authorities. But what would I have called them on? It, the guy was the going thing. crazy. He was having an episode. Yeah, He'd have calmed down. I was able to get him calmed down. I got him home. Well, ultimately, he, police believe, is the person who committed these murders. So how do you handle it if you're this guy? You know, it's... How do you handle that? How do you look at, at yourself in the mirror and say, why didn't I do something? I think it's a what, question what can you that, do, though? That's the question. Well, that's a question everybody's asking. It's clear. I mean, there's probably, you know, based on the, the heinous uh, nature of this crime, there has to be a, a level of mental illness involved. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and that's such a broad spectrum mental illness and you know father joe actually in his homily when he was talking to the parish about this well, gentleman on a saturday situation that happened saturday a, a saturday at, at the church yeah and you know he said in his you know when he talked to the congregation on sunday that this is uh you know a reality this mental health thing and it's kind of you know everybody thinks it's not going to happen here or but look it's we've had instances yeah, of uh, yeah. several times it's happened and it was parishioners at lords that uh, that stepped up that ultimately and... yeah kind of contained him yeah and, yeah Boy, what a just terrible, uh, terrible situation. So that's what we know going into uh, today. We'll speak with Chief Williams and get uh, further details on uh, what they do know this morning. But at this point, authorities do believe that they have in custody the, uh, the person who they believe committed these crimes. Just terrible. Uh, then there's the uh, Albany police officer, off-duty Albany police officer, that authorities say was at the casino, was at the Turning Stone, and made his way back into Utica and had cash on his person. Um, police say he was participating with a, a prostitute when someone uh, with a knife uh, tried to rob him. Yeah. And threatened him with a knife, according to the story that is out there. He then shot the person in the chest several times. Police are not charging him with any uh, charges related to the shooting death of this man on Lincoln Avenue. However, they did charge him with solicitation of prostitution. Misdemeanor charge, and he's been put on uh, paid le- or uh, administrative leave from the Albany Police Department. Uh, let's go a little light, a little lighter. The president uh, tonight will be on all the major networks and cable news as well as he will be, and WIBX will carry that as well tonight at nine o'clock. Uh, the president will be speaking to the country about the immigration situation. Um, and there's a great deal. That right now, the Democrats are asking for equal time. They say it's political, and uh, they say how uh, we should have equal time because the president is not going to speak the truth. You're, I just they always get equal time. You know when he does a uh, when he does a national address like this, there's always a rebuttal. At the not, end. Uh, not no no not not for something like not an Oval Office address. Uh, you know what? You're right. I'm yeah. sorry. That's right the about. State of the Union, right? State of the Union, or something to that effect. But they're saying that this is. It is political, and they're right. It's it's completely political. There's no the, the problem at the border, and I get it. We have to fix the problem at the border, but there's no critical issue going on, critical danger going on at the southern border that hasn't been going on for the last decade. Uh, this so is it's a... not as if um, it's not as if all of a sudden. The, the the Russians are at the border and they're ready to come over or whoever these people are. They do say that last year six people were stopped at the southern border uh, that had uh, some ties to terrorism. Um, uh, uh, that they believe six people. That was reported by NBC last night. But the report that's been coming out of Sarah Sanders is there's 3,000 that have terrorist <laughs> ties. That's the problem that you have with this White House that you don't know what to you don't know what's going to be said. I think uh, I, I do think it, it is political, but the government is shut down, so it's not like this is coming out of it. I and think this they, is a justification. Uh, I think there are, there are times when the networks have, and I had a friend yesterday saying, I if the Democrat if the uh, if the media doesn't run the president's speech tonight, 
then I feel they're in the tank for the Democrats, which is what the president has said all along, right? Um, there are times through history that the president has held a an Oval Address, Oval Office Address, and the media has decided not to carry it because they deemed it to be political. I can't imagine, and I know they've all come out and said they're carrying this thing tonight. I cannot imagine that they would do that here. You have a government shutdown right now. This yeah. is... You're in the midst of a major controversy. Plus, this guy is ratings gold. Yeah. You either love him or you hate him. It's yeah. like I, anything you anything you cancel tonight because you put the president on is not going to hurt your numbers. Yeah. Uh, can I just say, <laughs> I don't know how much longer this is going to drag on, but I, I, I think I made a joke about this in a text to you last night. When you start telling people that their IRS checks are going to get delayed, well, oh, that's a new report. That's been, not. That has been corrected. And, oh, that's been and corrected. I believe that the uh, the IRS um, returns will be taken care of. Well, for a lot of folks, that would be a national emergency. <laughs> however, I will tell you, I am that among them. <laughs> how, okay. <laughs> how, however, if this isn't taken care of by Monday, checks to federal employees will not go out on Friday. They will not get their checks on Friday as, as scheduled. So. It's a problem, I guess, if you're one of those federal workers not receiving a check. There's no doubt it's a problem. Sure. But uh, it, does it look like either side is going to be able to come to, together and put some deal together? I would, um, I'd be surprised at this point with everything going on. And that's going to be part of what the president has to talk about uh, tonight. They're really trying to win public support here in this shutdown and to be able to blame it on the, uh, on the Democrats. We'll see what the president has to say tonight and last night. Is there a controversy over whether or not Alabama should have been in this game? No. Uh, that was their is, first loss. Is there a con- is uh, both teams came in undefeated? I don't think there's a there's a controversy, but there are other undefeated teams in the top ten as well. Um, and Clemson, any debate over whether Clemson uh, should have prior to last night should have been in? No. The question was about Georgia. Uh, so now, when you take a look at this, uh, when you take a look at this game last night, it was close at halftime. Uh, Clemson had the lead, but I felt that uh, I felt that Alabama had control of the game. If it weren't for two interceptions, two turnovers, uh, Clemson would be trailing uh, in that game. The second half is a completely different story. They blew them out in the second half. I never saw that coming. I couldn't. I looked at the I forty four sixteen. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I couldn't yeah. believe. Well, that. it just burns my bottom a little bit that uh, as you were making me aware of it, that the quarterback that won against Alabama was the one we almost beat. Quarterback, he's the one that uh, was the uh, was the replacement. Their starting quarterback when Syracuse played Clemson was not available, and this young kid who looks like um, I, I don't know uh, Sir Lancelot from one of those Broadway <laughs> shows. Um, <laughs> he, uh, I mean, he looks like. A child, doesn't he? When you when you look at him. No, no. Hang on, we need a clarification here because if you remember when they played Syracuse, the starter was gone. We got the backup, and then he got hurt early, and we ended up getting the third stringer for most of that game. Was this the second stringer this or the is, third stringer? This was the second stringer. Okay. He came back in though before the end of the game, I think, didn't he? Right. His name is Trevor Lawrence. Is who yeah. you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Threw for almost 350 yards last night. So pretty impressive, I would say. Right. Yeah. And you have LaShawn McCoy out uh, saying, now he might change his mind, it might be Clemson now, but uh, before last night's game, McCoy was out begging the Bills to take the entire offensive line from Alabama. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's that's kind of funny. Uh, Rachel, good morning. It is uh, slick in some spots. The roads are not in bad conditions, uh, mainly the highways and and, and the valley and, and through the cities, but... I'm assuming the sidewalks, the driveways, the side streets, and the rural areas pretty slick here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, um, kind of sloppy overnight, and that's why. So what, what's going to happen over the next couple of hours is uh, it's mainly going to be wind is the concern for this morning. Um, all this precip is going to kind of come to an end or switch back over to um, either snow, depending on temperature, or just plain rain. So we're not going to be in the you know, the transition zone, which is where we don't want to be, which is yeah. where we were all night with the freezing rain and the sleet and stuff. So um, we'll eventually go one way or the other, and then by tomorrow we'll be cold enough that we'll get all snow, and it's going to be um, lake effect. Uh, just because we're switching the wind direction. So um, that's what the storm system is really going to do for the next 
24 hours. So it's not, I mean, it hasn't been like a super impressive snowstorm or anything like that. It's just pretty sloppy with the, with the temperature um, going back and forth Mm -hmm. close to freezing. Uh, Is there another storm coming that we might see this weekend? Uh, That is, up in the air. Um, that can Literally. go one of two ways, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the, if it goes, there's one track that the storm could go that would put us um, in a position where we have a fair amount of accumulating snow. But yeah. um, if it stays south and east of us, then it's, it's going to miss us completely. So it's um, it could end up being a nor'easter it's a combination of two storm systems that have to come together so if there's if they come together if there's enough energy moisture all that kind of stuff for accumulating snow but if they don't come together then it's just two weak storm systems that will probably just nick us at the, at the moment Got it. All right. on the lake effect tomorrow uh do you have a range in what we could be looking at um I, it's not going to be a big lake effect event but since we just haven't seen much this season um it's, it's going to be really hit, hit or miss what lake effect usually does so um i could get us you know several inches and i think that's a good bet for, for anywhere through one yep. thing like to um upwards of a foot or more that's going to be more north country i think so it, it, you're what like two to four when you say several or more than that yeah yeah i think that's <laughs> that's a good bet yeah for, the Utica area, anyway. Yep. It just depends on where the fans are. They could definitely go higher than that if it sits over top of us. But um, I think just with the way the wind direction is going to be, it'll it'll stay north. And is that overnight tonight, or did you say Wednesday to Thursday? Yeah, that's going to start tonight. And start then tonight. Go, yeah, okay. go into Wednesday, and then maybe even linger into Thursday. Into Thursday as well. Uh, but for yeah. today, chances are mixed precipitation, but... Uh, there's a, a chance, especially in the valleys, of uh, of this turning to rain through the day today. And then yeah. that's when the snow Definitely will begin windy. tonight. Yeah. And windy. And windy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Rachel. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Rachel Witter, Chief Meteorologist at Eyewitness News. And remember that wind, along with trees that are covered with uh, the ice and the, the sleet that was really coming down heavily overnight, uh, could pose some uh, problems on power lines and uh and the trees themselves. So sidewalks, uh, walkways, parking lots, uh, just really, it's been freezing rain all night long, so be aware of that. I do think that by the time we get to that two-hour mark uh, where schools are on their delay, that the, everything should be in really pretty good shape, and even by the 7 o'clock hour. But you do want to leave a little extra time, and, of course, if your car is outside overnight, you're, it's, there's a, a pretty decent layer of ice all over it because it was coming down last night. Yeah, and then Pretty it froze, and then it thaws, yeah. and then it refreezes. And then just a note, tomorrow, you know, tune in to us again. Now because... we might be having uh, the lake effect uh, uh, snow. And yeah. uh, as Rachel said, uh, there might be an event happening this weekend. This all after the National Weather Service had a story a week ago saying, looks like January is going to be relatively quiet. <laughs> and now look at what's going on right they now. It's know. crazy. Uh, you're right. They have a hard time predicting tomorrow, yet they enjoy predicting three weeks out. I just don't understand it. <laughs> And we can get you the forecast for spring 2019, by the way, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. So the Consumer Electronics Show is going on in Vegas. And I want to give you just a few things on that before we talk to uh, Gabby Cabby, Peter Franklin. Um, this is the, the show where they debut everything. All the cool stuff, things that um, are brand new in some cases. Like, the, for instance, there is a device that was de- that debuted last year, but it wasn't a working prototype. Okay. Uh, this year, it is a working prototype, and they have it priced under a thousand dollars. Do you want to know what it is? Uh, you're excited about it, so I'd like well, to know. Well, yes. I'm. I'm. You're leading it's with it. It's not something I would buy. Okay. However, it is an automatic clothes folder. Oh, I'd buy it. So uh, the device is the size of a big one of the bigger copy machines that you might put up on a on a desk, and it is it. it Digitally, it's somehow able through its intelligence, it's able to read what kind of article of clothing it is, and then it folds it in the best possible way. And I got to tell you, it works. 
I think commercially that would be the way to get rid of employees, right? And yes. probably that might even be done today. There, there might be a device that's being used out there commercially. But um, but to have this in your home yeah, I don't for like for $1,000? If you're Octomom, maybe. Okay. I guess, I guess. But I don't, because how long does it take you to fold, you know, your clothes, An first hour. of all? Uh, does this do this? An obviously hour. Does button downs and everything like that? That's maybe, I usually just put that it, stuff on a hanger. It will, it will, uh, it'll, it'll take care of everything. You, you know the, if you ever see people in a retail clothing store, they have, it, it's like a little. They're good folders too. It's like a little plastic thing where they just lay the shirt on it. They bend the arm, bend <laughs> the arm, flip the top. Sometimes they and use then, paper. Yeah. The, like the, a thicker paper. There's a little. So you're right. It's almost for, like a little uh, a little model that they they use that helps them that helps them fold. But in this case, um, uh, the device does it. You pop it in, it pops it out. But you're Fold right. It. For someone, a, a family of four, to go buy something that's yeah, the size crazy. of a of a commercial it's printer, it's, I, I would I would have it if it wasn't a thousand dollars. I'd be like, hey, check out what we have here. Take your shirt off. Let me show you what I can do. <laughs> you buy that for your uh, wife as a Christmas. Yeah, have gift. a cocktail, everybody. Look what this can do. <laughs> hey, uh, it does pants too. <laughs> how about this? Both Sony and Samsung. Are adding to their TVs, uh, their new TVs. Uh-huh. They are adding uh, Apple uh, Music and something with uh, Apple, the, one of their other streaming services. This is, I say this is big because the question is becoming is there a need for Apple TV? Uh, in five years, will there be a need for Apple TV? Because what's beginning to happen. Apple TV is a is a device. If you don't know, it's a little square. You, you I have ha- had one for several years. You plug it into your TV, and it allows you to get YouTube. I can watch YouTube online. You download apps. You can get the fo- the forecast, uh, HBO, Showtime, ESPN, whatever you want to subscribe to. Some of the stuff is free. It was a smart isn't. TV before everybody it else comes, caught on. It comes with iTunes. It comes with. It connects my iPhone to my TV. All of this stuff. Uh, and their big thing is it takes your home network and it and it puts it into your TV. So if you have a way to lock or unlock your garage door, you can do it through your Apple TV. You could do it from Cleveland, and your Apple TV becomes your, your hub. But because these TVs are now smart mm-hmm. and they're now taking on these services, the fact that Apple is using someone else as a conduit for their products – is telling you they're they're giving up on the because smart TVs are really doing what what Apple TV does. They and it's built the way. In, it's built right into the television, mm-hmm. right? If you if you buy a smart TV, so which most are nowadays. I mean, let's face it: you go about, and buy a new flat screen TV, it's probably got the smart. It's TV already there. Feature. O- OLED has a uh, or I guess it's Ogle O G L E has an eight K TV. At what point is the resolution going to become so good that the human eye can't see it? Well, they so said 4K was going to be it. 4K, they said no. that. The, the only difference you could notice was in video games. So in 8K, yeah. this is a complete gaming thing. Uh, okay. But yeah. one more thing on an insert on a smart TV. How about this, the, the digital antenna? I hate having to buy the digital antenna and then wire it right, the way you auto, would. Something to automatically pick up. It's right, right in your if television. You have to put something on, on your rooftop or what have you. That would be really... Yeah, that would be. You big. should write a letter. And Harley Davidson has an electric, an electric uh, motorcycle that is now available for uh, for purchase. Fully um, electric. I, well, the, think about how the electric cars, how quickly they can go. Uh, imagine having a motorcycle that could do the same thing, fully electric. It's uh, a pr- and, yeah, and it's a uh, and it's a Harley Davidson. So how many miles? You know the range. Probably um, not more than sixty or eighty miles. Is it? Uh, well, an electric car can, so my guess is this thing can go quite a distance. I'll look into it further, And it makes but... the noise. It's not real, but it still makes it. <laughs> it does? It's a little yeah, speaker I have on it. <laughs> Peter Franklin is the Gabby Cabby in New York City. It's crazy, Peter, this technology, isn't it, as it continues to just wow us all with the things that can be done. Just gadgets, gadgets, and more gadgets. I wonder how long before all cars in, uh, in New York City will, uh, all cabs in New York City will be electric. 
Well, it's a great idea. I mean, I mean, just looking for the conspiracy theory, there has to be something that's holding it up because it's so obvious. I mean, we do basically short runs. Yeah. Uh, you're easy to get the car charged in New York. It was set up, and it just never seems to happen. But eventually it will. It, it will be very good. And um, then uh, we'll have quiet. It'll be so quiet. <laughs> um, and one of the problems they have with these electric cars is that people end up crossing the street because they don't hear the car coming coming so they're actually adding noise to the very very quiet electric cars so that people don't get hit by them it's really yeah but we got a phenomenon i don't know if it's a phenomenon in new york city only but there's a lot of people i notice these days who are willing to take the hit i mean they're intentionally crossing and jaywalking i'm not talking about the people who are just doing it out of absent mindedness but people are saying "Ah, i'll take the hit yes worth the money the the, the settlement settlement i'll be Oh, I mean, where they'll gosh. literally be stepping in front of cars, and I've seen it happen Crazy. time and time again. Wow. So the motorcycle, this Harley motorcycle, by the way, it's going to sell for 30000 It'll debut in August of this year. Uh, Harley says it has a range, travel range of 110 city miles on a single charge, but it does not specify how that translates on the highway. Mm, okay. Very, uh, very interesting. That's good. Uh, I Pete, can get I get one with a little side card and take you around. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool. I'm uh, I'm excited about this. <laughs> uh, well, I'd have to make that noise because the motorcycle itself would right. be silent. So I'd be. No, 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 it's really yeah. great. What do you do? You pull up to a crossed walk and you go rum rum and you curse people. Yeah. You know, yeah. Room you, know, you room you. Motorcycle people. Uh, <laughs> New Yorkers. There's a story out about New Yorkers, their resolutions and salad joints and eating healthy. What's going on? Is it the healthiest place in the world? Well, at the first, well, it is. It's, you know, the people with the, with the, always the nanny society where everything is kind of legislated. But, you know, it's, I guess the intentions are good. And there's a couple of new things going on. They're clamping down on Airbnb places, trying to really make them completely illegal. Uh, now you don't have to be identified as a male or a female. You can just refer to yourself as an X. So that's kind of interesting. They're getting rid of styrofoam products, the plastic straws. I can't believe and it's pharmacies the in the boroughs are not going to be allowed to sell cigarettes or other tobacco uses. Mm. So it's a you know it's another whole wave of rules and regulations. And as I say, people say nanny society, nanny society. Yeah, but when it deals with health, it's not yeah. a bad idea. There was a, a guy on sixty Minutes um, from Massachusetts that they say is a genius and um, is a scientist, but never went to school for it. Never, but decided I'm going to solve the problem of uh, pollution and fossil fuels and plastics, etc. But he has come up with a way to make plastic straws, and and they ha- they can build it into the straw, to the makeup of the straw or the bottle or whatever, where it disintegrates after so many days. For instance, they have a plastic bottle that begins disintegrating after 21 days. But it is, it's just like a regular plastic bottle, but it is biodegradable. And because I got to tell you, Peter, I hate those paper straws. They end up getting all soggy. They don't work. It's terrible. A federal judge in New York City is standing up for Airbnb and other online home sharing sites that are currently, well, they were anyway, illegal in New York City. What do you think? Yeah, well, you know, it, it's presenting a real problem. Right now, you can't get an apartment in New York City. You really can't. You've got to find a real estate broker who reads the obituaries. And then the conversation goes something like this. Hello, we're very sorry to hear about your mother's passing. When can we look at the apartment? I mean, it's just it's almost impossible. And, and a good reasoning for all of that is that the Airbnb things have taken up so much of the space. There's not enough people who just want an apartment. So the city had passed these regulations that were going to start January 1st. But a federal judge, you notice how the judges always stick their nose into everything, mm-hmm. decided, no, it wasn't going to happen. Airbnbs present, and remember, that's just a brand name. I mean, just like when you talk about uh, Uber, it's a brand name. It's, you know, so we're picking on a specific company, but it's all of them. Presents a lot of problems. And, of course, the hotel industry hates them with a passion. So Mm, they fund all these things to get rid of them. When we went to uh, Denver, we stayed in an Airbnb, and it was beautiful. It was a three-story condo, had a a deck on top with a grill and a view. It was really just, uh, it was awesome. And it was half the price. Everything has the yin and the yang. You're right. The good points and the bad points. You're right. Later, we found out the family had scabies, and we all went home on the plane scratching ourselves. <laughs> 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 have a problem when yeah. they come down to New York City staying someplace. 
I can always let him sleep in one of our cabs. Uh, you know, that would be that. that would be enjoyable. Okay, if you're a speaking, person, you get a cab. The best tour in New York City is Peter Franklin. I want to read Peter a uh, review that you recently received, and it reads this way. Thanks so much for the wonderful tour yesterday. Robert said that what he liked most about New York City was your tour. He said it was only great because it was you. Thanks again, Heidi. It is the best tour in New York City. He'll take you to places you never even knew oh, that's existed. That's so nice of you. Thanks for saying that. Well, I try hard. I really do. It's a, I'm, I'm, I'm very competitive, and if I'm giving somebody a tour, I'm going to do the best I possibly can. So I really love it when I get something like that. Uh, go to Gabby.com for details. We'll do it again next week, Peter. Enjoy your wonderful day in the Big Apple. You got it, sweetheart. Yeah. Bye-bye. We'll uh, come back next hour with the chief of police in Utica on this horrific homicide. We'll talk about it. On the other side. Hey, this uh, weekend on Sunday, the United Way and the Waterfront Grill in Herkimer are holding the big tailgate party. And WIBX uh, will be there on Sunday to benefit the United Way of the Valley in Greater Utica. This Sunday, 12 to four, till 4, at the Waterfront Grill. It's $25 per person. It's sponsored by WIBX. Mark Butler, the uh, now retired assemblyman. So talented. Barb, Barb so- and Rocky Fiato. Um, and Mark has been doing this for 16 years, so can, we're told. Can I tell you that the fact that it's being held this weekend, like, you know, San Diego looked good against Baltimore this weekend, and now they go and they, they yeah. visit New England. This, you know, who's going to win this game? I can tell you, the fact that this event is being held this weekend, I can almost guarantee New England will win. I can't tell you how many times, you know, we've been to this, this event. A, it's another New England win. And it's, yeah. I drive home listening the to cool New England The cool thing about this game. is normally it was held on championship weekend, uh, um, and uh, the games wouldn't start until 4. So this is kind of cool. The game will be going on. It's a one, the Patriots game is a 1 o'clock game. So the first game will be going on on Sunday while we're, we're actually there. It's noon until 4 on Sunday at the Waterfront Grill. $25 a person, a ton of prizes, all-you-can-eat buffet. The games are on there, many TVs. And it's from noon until 4 at the Waterfront Grill in Herkimer mm-hmm. to benefit United Way of the Valley in Greater Utica. So check that out. It is, again, $25 per person, and it's right at Gems Along the Mohawk, right on the canal, right near the Thruway Exchange in the village of Herkimer. Live on your radio and live on your TV, too. This is Keeler on WIBX 950 and simulcast on WFXV Fox 33. We'll give you another update on the uh, school delays here this morning, and there's a whole bunch of them. Did somebody just close? They uh, went from a two-hour yeah. delay to a closure. That's Canis- Canistota. Canistota. Can- so, or Canistota. I, soda. I think they're getting hit a little worse to the, uh, to the west. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong. Uh, Ed Welch um, was just on the radio with us the other day. We were talking about gas prices and all of everything else that's going on in the world. And uh, Ed is up for, after this year, is up for re-election, but he's made a decision. Good morning, Ed Welch. Good morning, Bill. How are you guys doing this morning? Wonderful. I should say up for re-election. You're on the United County uh, Board of Legislators, and you have made a, uh, a disclosure here. Yes, uh, on, on January one, I, I announced that uh, I would not be seeking re-election this year, my and, tenth term. So uh, I'll yeah. finish my ninth term and uh, retire from the board. And what's your uh, what's your reason? I mean, you've been a staple on that uh, that legislature. Well, Bill, I I look at working as a legislator as part of my public service. Um, I do different community things. I think people know a lot of different things I do, and I've always just viewed. The legislature is another piece of community work. I like doing different things and a lot of other things I wish to accomplish. So I don't view myself as a, as a politician, uh, you know, in that role. Uh, I've always tried to keep a low profile as a legislator. Uh, I've, you know, I believe that in politics you have uh, workhorses and show horses. Uh, I like, I think of myself as a workhorse. And uh, I also don't think that I've ever wanted to be there for life. Actually, yeah. Bill, I've, I'm there a lot longer than I thought I would be. Yeah. Uh, now, during your, your tenure, a lot really has been accomplished um, in Oneida County because almost all of the uh, the nine years you've been there has been this uh, this battle over the land claim. And that, during your time, has been resolved. Yes. Uh, if, if we look back to when I first went to the board, which was the uh, election of 2001, and actually uh, 9-11 actually stopped my primary that day. Wow. So if you go way back to when, that's when uh, I was first, uh, my first election as legislator. 
uh, had a primary, and then, of course, uh, they moved the election. They canceled the election on Election Day due to Line 11, which I'll, I'll never forget. My, I have many family members that live in lower Manhattan, and uh, it was a very frightening day. Yeah. But if, if you go past that forward, uh, you know, and sometime I'd like to talk about it in great length, but we've taken this county a long way in the past uh, 18 years. And I can cite many, many things, but I think two things that I, I would point out that I think are most important. Number one is there is a continuity at the Board of Legislators. I, I say I don't want to be there for life, but we don't have constant turnover. So you have a group of people who are there, for the most part, together for a long time. Secondarily, we've had good continuity with the county executive's office. Uh, one of the things that we wanted uh, from Tony Pacenti when he first came on board was that continuity that, that I thought was missing from the county executive chair because we, we had a lot of great people be county executives, but they didn't stay very long. And I thought that to move forward as a community, you've got to have continuity for a long time. No Fortune 500 company does well changing CEOs every couple yeah, of years. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Tony told us back then he would stay with us at least 10 years. And, uh, but he also asked that we do the same. Yeah. And, uh, and, again, it's always up to the voters. But I said, you know what, I'll make that commitment uh, for that period of time if, if Tony's willing to do that. Because I kind of thought we need a solid team of guys there and, and, get, and ladies there that can do the work. And you know what? That's why this, I believe this county has moved forward is because we have continuity there. We've had good leadership there. And uh, people that understand, we'll just say, the underpinnings of how things really work in this county. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, because you, we're in a world where everybody likes to talk about uh, term limits, and how, you know, these these legislators and, and oftentimes we're talking about state and national, uh, but, uh, you know, they they go and they stay there. Uh, there are people that are calling for for two terms, three terms. But there is something to be said for a, a lot of times. It seems that that first term is just trying to figuring your way. Um, and then sure. as time goes on, you gain you gain some uh, seniority and some clout and the ability and knowledge um, there is something to be said for duration versus uh, a short-term limit uh, restriction. There, there is, Bill, and and I don't know what the upper end should be. Um, I, I, after being here as long as I have, I kind of think ten to twelve years is enough time. But people have to remember that the United County has about twelve hundred and fifty-six square miles. If you think of all the towns and yeah. villages, you're a county legislator. You do represent your district, but. What happens in Camden is as important to me as what happens in Utica. Sure. Oh, and, and that's the kind of focus that everybody there has. And you don't gain that, that perspective unless you're there for a while. You know, our, our county budget is north of $400 million. Uh, to understand the budget, the process, uh, and, and not to mention all the state regulations, which pretty much handcuff uh, everything we do or try to do, and try to find workarounds to, to get things done, does require, uh, you know, a deft hand. And uh, that's why I'm proud of the people I served with there. Uh, we have good good people there. Uh, but how long should you be there? Uh, I think for life is too long, and I think two years is too short. Uh, you know, you, everybody wants that Goldilocks, yeah, yeah. you know, what's just right. Uh, personally, I think it's around 12 years, and I would love to, if, we're, if I was able to wave a magic wand, I'd make it four-year terms, three terms, and go home. Uh, is there someone that you would have in mind uh, as a successor? Well, at the moment, uh, there's people out there talking about it, obviously. Um, you know, I didn't advertise that I was doing this, so it caught everybody kind of by surprise. Uh, but I, I also thought by doing it early, it'll give a lot of people time to talk and yeah. figure things yeah. out. Um, I, I've talked to a couple of people. Um, I think we'll, we'll see some good people come forward. And, uh, again, my, my ideal candidate is a person that's community-minded, respected in the community, uh, someone that can work with others. Uh, you're you're part of a legislative body. Yeah. Uh, you cannot dictate things, and uh, you have to work with a group. And if someone that has a proven ability to to work within a group dynamic and do well, that is that is really what's required to represent the city of Utica and make sure that uh, our voice is carried throughout the whole county, as well as look after everything else in the county. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to ask you about something. You just said uh, you can't dictate things. You have to work with any everybody. And something that the county executive has tried to work with a lot of folks on in municipalities is consolidation. Any comments uh, in I, your I final... I and, and uh, I'm, I'm going to say this, that, that uh, and I, I can go back to County Executive Ralph Yannis, who actually, when I was County Executive when I first started, and Ralph tried to do some consolidation, uh, we'll just say, uh, ideas. 
Every county executive has tried this, and for the most part, it has not worked out so well. And, and it's very sad. Uh, and I, I'm not going to pick on any one particular village or town, but let's put it this way. There's lots of room to consolidate services, but people are afraid of losing control. Right. And uh, I'm going to make a statement that's absolutely true, that I believe to be true, but it's a harsh statement. And that is that the reason we haven't had consolidation is taxes aren't high enough yet. Mm, interesting. And I'm going to make I'm going to give you a point in case. Um, we we worked for six years, and in fact, I served with Brian Miller. We worked for six years to consolidate the 911, and it went nowhere. And when uh, Pat Tosinski came in as as town supervisor, in New and they were faced with a budget shortfall, and he would would require a huge increase in uh, the the town tax property tax. Uh, at the time, the legislator there, uh, Fred Sadala, uh, and I, we, we, we again, we, we brought this up, and it took three months to get the job done, uh, along with a lot of other people. I don't want to just take credit here, but, but Fred was the legislator from the district, and he was a, a, a driver in that at the time. And uh, so basically, when faced with a big tax increase, 911 got consolidated inside right. of three months. Uh, you know, six uh, years of beating your head against the rock. So uh, yeah. these are the types of things that I think trigger the consolidation is someone has to be forced into it by uh, really bad economic choices. Well, it's interesting. Uh, isn't that the way with everything? And yeah. I mean, when you talk on Saturday mornings with uh, with Auto Talk, um, uh, electric cars are not going to be uh, predominant in the United States or in the world until it is economically uh, not just that's feasible, right, but when, there's when, an, you, when you got an electric car that charges in, in, in an hour, yep. you know, 300 miles on a charge and costs thirty thousand dollars, you'll sell them all. That's exactly right. And yeah. it's six dollars yeah. a gallon. You know, you can make the same case for health too. How many mm-hmm. people let their health go until, oh my gosh, I must do something now because I'm going to have a heart attack? Yeah. You know, sure. Mm-hmm. And, and as, as we all get older, we begin to realize that you know we're, we've been cashing checks our body can't support forever. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My, myself yep. included. So yep. we're all, we're all, you know, human nature is the same with everybody, guys. And uh, so when it comes to towns and politics and cities and, and doing different things, everybody is, it's human nature to want to basically be the you know, the keeper of your own castle, so to speak. And uh, unfortunately, the structure of New York State has allowed that to become, a, uh, you know, basically ingrained in our society yep. here. Yeah. You know the the governor has done the 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 uh, the tax cap, and I think he believed that that would force consolidation, but that's obviously not happened. And and what happens with that is every everybody becomes, uh, we'll we'll just say slavish to the two percent cap. Right, right. So now you start coming up with other budgetary ways of 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 paying your bills because you still have to pay the bills. Mm-hmm. So so what's interesting is you 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 put a cap on a, on on the, the the property tax, and then conversely. Uh, you keep adding more unfunded mandates to local governments. So a great case is this past budget uh, where we, where they basically they passed the MBCC tax, which I, of course, was, was opposed to. And, and I was opposed not because of, of the uh, alternative. Uh, if we would have had to raise property tax across the board a couple, of three or four points, I would have voted for that. And I have in the past because you have to pay the bills. Yep. But uh, – what bothered me about the MVCC tax, especially the load of, uh, where it's placed on the city of Utica and the city of Rome and New Hartford, uh, what bothered me the most about it was that I, I felt that you're going to begin to balkanize the, the budgetary process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or in other words, uh, let's let's start charging local municipalities for everything we do at the local level. That's supposed to be a countywide service. Right. Right. Uh, and and that's and I I fear that that could add to political divisions going forward. Uh, uh, it didn't happen this time, obviously, yeah. but. But uh, that that sets a pattern of things that could end up in a bad place while we're trying to, you know, pray to this two uh, percent cap, mm-hmm. which yeah. uh, which in theory is very nice, but doesn't work. Uh, Ed Welch, we appreciate your time, and of course, uh, he is not retiring from AAA. You are not retiring from uh, from Auto Talk, which airs every week on Saturday mornings here on WIBX, and that's uh, I'm not retiring from anything thing. else. Yep, that's it. That's it. I it's got just... a lot of years of work left ahead of me, and I got a lot of other things I wish to accomplish. All right, Ed. Thanks so much. Uh, congratulations on. Uh, hey, thank you on guys for having big, me on. Big accomplishment. So thanks so much. Bye. Uh, coming up, we'll talk to the Utica Police Chief on the the crazy couple of days that they have had, and it involves a horrific murder that they are investigating. Police now believe they have both of the victims. But uh, the word mutilation is being uh, is being used. We have audio from a security camera 
that was picked up by a neighbor over there, which shows the a body being dragged and loaded into a vehicle. Um, we'll work on authenticity with the chief. We'll play that audio for you coming up in just a moment. Also, a free money question. Chance at 100 bucks from Hobanka. And birthdays, all of it coming up next to WIBX. How was your ride in? Was it slippery? He came in. You know what time he came in? Came in early. Yeah, yeah I did come in early. What time did you come in? One uh, thirty. One thirty. Uh, that's early. Good for you. Dedicated man right there. Where'd you sleep? In a hidden place in the building. Okay. <laughs> a hidden Whoa. Place. A hidden place. <laughs> All right. Um, it's a quiet place. Let's do our Hobaika free money question of the day from Joseph and Andrew Hobaika. And it's a chance to win. Are you ready? $100. All right. Let's do caller number three right now. 315. Oh, I know that phone. 315. So that's a close your phone. That's a uh, Andrew, can you help him? Delay phone. Uh, yeah, Andrew's going to get the school delay quickly. And then that means somebody's probably switching from a delay to Folks, a Folks, it's quarter to eight. You haven't made up your mind yet? Well, they have a two-hour delay. They don't have to leave until right now. Let's see what we have. Can you tell uh, I get a little Caller annoyed. three right now, 315 <laughs> What, Andrew? What's going on? Morrisville Eaton is now closed. Morrisville is closed. Morrisville Eaton. Morrisville Eaton is now closed. Thank you. All right. Uh, caller three will take, and then we're going to bring in, and we can do that now, uh, Utica Police Chief. Mark Williams is uh, is coming in, and we're going to get the latest on a very difficult couple of days that they've had at UPD, um, and it's really quite. Uh, it's these stories are. This is one of the. This is somebody said to me yesterday. Let me just tell you that you will be. This is uh, this one case is one you're going to find, and uh, you'll probably find. Showing up on a dateline. It's that bad. The story's that bad. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to the uh, police department coming right up. Bill is standing by in Herkimer right now, and it's on line three. Is that right? Hello, William. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. I haven't talked to you in a while. Well, Happy New Year to you. It's great to uh, hear yeah. your voice, man. Uh, great to hear you guys. All right. Are you ready for $100 from the Hobika Law Firm? Okay? Yes. You're ready. Here we go. You'll have seven seconds for 100 bucks. Here is your question. Name the college football coach who was celebrating last night. Ready? Go. Um, Clemson? I don't know. Uh, well, you're, you're right. You, you got that one right. Davey, for the 100 bucks, Davey. Debo Sweeney. Yeah. Uh, Sweeney oh, uh, is. Uh, I, I gotta tell you, the right team though. You did have the right team. That's got to be worth something, like a gift certificate. How about? Maybe? How about? Is that worth <laughs> a seventy-two Tavern and Grill gift card? How about that? That sounds great. All right, uh, that's uh, of course at the Adirondack Bank Center. You can do it before a game or at any time. They're open for lunch and dinner. Uh, hang tight, uh, Davey's going to hook you up, William. Can I say hello to Steve Williams? Uh, and we're not going to allow you to do that. Uh, well, Steve okay. Williams isn't here. Are you talking about? Are you talking about Mark Williams? Yes, I am. The, uh, the, the go ahead. You can say hi to him right now. Chief Williams is in studio. Chief, this is uh, William Porter. Uh, I knew you back in the seventies. Uh, I was the head of security at St. Luke's, and I remember the day you took your test. And I want to congratulate you on a, a great, great uh, thing you have done. Thank you very much. So, I got to say, I work with a great team of guys so, and girls. So. Uh, pretty nice. Small world out there, Bill, isn't it? It's really uh, yes, it's it a is. big world. It's small small city. world. <laughs> good point. Good point. Uh, Davey's going to hook you up. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. And happy All New right, Year. Guys. Have a good day. Yep. All right. I know, uh, Chief, good morning. Good this morning. has been a really rough uh, couple of days for, for you guys. Awful way to start off the uh, the new year. Um, also in studio is Sergeant uh, Michael Curley. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so I want to start with something I know you're probably not happy with, and that's the, the video. And I just want to play a little piece of the audio. Um, that has been circulating. And your reason for, you just feel that the video that's being circulated right now, it's, it's certainly not respectful to family members. The family members, yeah. because they don't have all the graphic details of this. Thing. Yeah, and it is uh, it is a video. Uh, and the problem today is with Ring or whatever you have, uh, it's an awesome tool for police. It is. Uh, you think the authorities and the municipalities, they all have cameras. Well, Almost every neighbor has got a camera on you right now. Yeah, or a um, drone. Or a drone of some sort. Yeah. Here's the audio. As these, This is Sunday night, two hours after this had happened. And they have a video footage across the street from someone, and we believe it's the suspect, who is dragging a body and loading it into a car. Listen to their reaction 
as they watch the video here. This is their reaction. This is in Utica. He's f***ing dragging a body right there. That's the murder that happened on Tilden and Albany. You see it? That's the dead body right there. He's dragging it to the f***ing car, yo. And we got it on the f***ing tape. That's crazy. We play it again. It's still playing, bro. He's just... Oh, he's putting it in the car. Yeah, he's dragging it in the f***ing car. Wow. And you're literally um, able to... I mean, that's the world we live in today. It is. Yeah. So um, I'm going to... I'll get into the... I'm going to get into the Albany PD connection on the other story. Um, we'll get into that. But uh, let's go down the road here of, of what happened. You believe at this point... You have the uh, the suspect and someone you believe is a murderer. Yes. Uh, there are two victims, and you believe you have the remains from both of those victims. Yes, especially last night. Uh, we, we believe we found the, 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 the remains of the second person. And yeah. would that be the in relationship to the person who's your suspect, would that be the grandmother? It is. That's okay. what we believe. But we're and, still waiting positive identification from the ME's office. How bad is it in terms of we're hearing the word mutilation? How bad is it, and how difficult is it to actually uh, get a positive ID? Um, how bad are we talking? I, I can't speak for the ME's office, but um, I know it's not an easy task. I mean, especially the state that the body was found in. Yeah. But uh, um, they have ways of doing that, and mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm sure we'll get a positive ID very shortly. Um, can you walk us through this, uh, Sergeant Curley, a little bit, and uh, just walk us through a little bit of what happened and the timeline this all started uh, over the weekend. Sure. About 8 p.m. Sunday, uh, we get a call for a motor vehicle accident on the 900 block of Bleecker Street. The first responding officers are the Utica Fire Department, and they notice a male fleeing from the vehicle. Uh, that male starts to accost some females locally <clears throat> in, the, in the vicinity, uh, and based on that, they engage the male and end up tackling to the ground. Soon thereafter, uh, police officers arrive, assist with detaining the male, and during the course of that, he makes some spontaneous utterances that give us concern uh, regarding the welfare of some parties in the area. Okay. We start to do some background on the suspect um, and where he lived previously. So he also had an address in Rome, New Hartford. Uh, so we did our due diligence, checked some of the areas, and ultimately we end up at the residence of 1147 Tilden Ave. Um, psychotic? He certainly had some mental conditions at that point. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, what they are still being evaluated. Is this, uh, Chief, someone that uh, you guys have had any knowledge of prior to this? There was a prior incident uh, with the grandmother where um, um, he was arrested for strangulation as, as well as um, harassment. Uh, mm. And uh, I believe he was going through mental health court uh, to answer those charges. <clears throat> and that happened, I believe, in February and March of last year. I want to throw, uh, we'll get more uh, details as to what's going to happen from here, but um, we spoke with someone yesterday who has knowledge of this of this guy, trying to help out this person. Found him a job. Um, all of a sudden, recently, he was going kind of crazy um, to the point where he had to take him home from the job. Um, this person is struggling right now because they're, well, should I have called authorities? The problem you have is when you call authorities and you say, this guy's acting nutty, I think he's going to do something bad, uh, there is a – it's very difficult to be able to predict someone who might be messed up versus someone who might be messed up and going to commit a horrific crime. Bumbleo is a great example. Yes. How do I, this, uh, first of all, this person should not be sitting there beating himself up. No, you can never p predict human behavior, but uh... – I do think there's a serious issue with mental health issues throughout this entire state. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we see people um, on the street that really can't really fend for themselves. Mm -hmm. They're in assisted living homes, and they just don't make it. And, yeah. uh, and then they end up getting arrested for because of their mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there needs to be some real reform in the state of how we deal with mental health mentally ill people. I mean, you just can't put the police officers in the front lines right, right. dealing with these issues. Well, you realize that we've caught so much over the last 50 years. Uh, closed down facilities, uh, cut funding. Limited uh, beds. It's all, yeah. it's all being, it, it, it's all now resting on nonprofits. Yep. And police, you guys are the, you're on the front line of this. And we give advanced training in uh, mental health issues to not only people in the academy, but officers 
um, you know, with experience on the job. It's just that uh, it's becoming these social issues are becoming uh, a burden for police. Yeah. Can I ask what what can you do if you get a call like that from a police standpoint? I know you guys are on the front lines. Someone calls and says, "Hey, a coworker, a buddy, a cousin is saying uh, he's going to hurt himself. He's going to hurt someone else. He's kind of acting a little erratic." When you guys get a call like that, how how do you handle that? What what can you do? Our officers, uh, you know, because of the training, they also have the authority of the mental hygiene law, section nine forty one, and basically it's a very limited in scope. It says that if someone <clears throat> appears to be mentally ill and they appear to be in an eminent uh, threat to themselves or others, we can bring them in for a non-arrest uh, uh, non uh, custodial um, uh, evalu uh, mental health evaluation to a ho local hospital where uh, doctors would, uh, two doctors would later evaluate them. But, and that uh, happened with Bumbleo. It did. And, and he, was, he was released. He was released. Went back and the problem is we, we are... We have rights. Um, everyone has rights. You might be someone that is considered mentally ill, but you still have constitutional rights to your own body and your own person. And if you feel that you're okay, um, it's tough to keep that person. And you're absolutely right. It's not against the law to be mentally ill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to just review a little bit. Uh, this. Uh, it looks like this happened. Did the actual crime happen on Sunday? I know that we. he drove uh, into a telephone pole, right? <clears throat> Did the crime occur on Sunday? We Do have we a, uh, a time period that we know the last time that um, both parties were spoken to by family members. Okay. So right. we have about a 24-hour period between the accident and the last time okay. someone so spoke to Okay, so sometime over the weekend. Right. Um, and so we have two people who have been killed, um, uh, mutilated. It believes it, It's believed that the, uh, the murderer is in custody. Um, we're hearing that he's not able to speak to authorities. Is that still the case? And that is because of the accident? Yes, uh, he was placed in a medically, medically induced uh, coma. And, okay. Uh, he had a severe uh, head injury, and um, uh, that was the reason why they, they put him out. All right. Does it look like he drove into the, uh, purposely drove into the telephone pole? Just uh, being at the scene myself and, you know, the information I got, it looks like he intentionally drove into that telephone okay. pole at a high rate of speed. All right. Wow. And this person's name still has not been released? Is that the case? Not until we charge him. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. And when do you think that will happen? Um, uh, it all depends on his medical care and, you know, if we, you know how soon we get an opportunity to, to fully talk to him. Okay. Um, just a uh, just a terrible story. Two very innocent people. Um, and, again, we're talking once again, talking about mental illness yeah. and uh, and some sort of murder. It seems to be something that is so prevalent today. More than we would like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just one point of clarification. You said you had a, a call, I think, uh, basically the end of last winter, early spring, about this individual and the grandmother uh, strangulation and maybe some threats or something like that. Was this person living at that residence, the 1147 Tilden? He or was. He w was living there. Okay. He was living there. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. I, I want to switch gears uh, because you guys have been very busy. There is another story where someone yeah. uh, yesterday morning was shot and killed. Yeah. That one turned out to be a, a rather twisted story as well. Um, can we give a little review on that? It involved a police officer who was off duty from Albany. Sure. Officers get a, a, a call at 5 o'clock in the morning on the heels of this other investigation we're fully involved This is in. Monday morning. Yes. And um, of uh, a shooting. Uh, officers get there. Um, they come across a individual says he's an uh, off-duty um, Albany police officer. And uh, we have another person down, shot several times. Uh, How many times would you say? Um, I believe three to four. Okay. Uh, I don't have the um, – it's believed he fired his weapon four times. Okay. How many times he got hit? Um, we're still waiting for the medical examiner okay. to give us the, right. the report on that. But uh, uh, the information we got is that he came from the Stone Casino. He had a large sum of cash. He um, apparently went on this escort website that deals with um, Skip the Games, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, located this female that lives on um, Lincoln Ave, who's a known prostitute to us. Um, it appears that uh, from the information we got, not only from the officer, but the, the prostitute herself, uh, who confirms the story, that um, the guy comes in with the knife to, with the, in an attempt to rob him. So, this ha so he's entered her home, the police officer, entered her home, and all of a sudden somebody decides to come in and try to rob them. Yes. 
Do you think that there was that was coordinated in any way? Does the pro, do you feel the prostitute might have this might have been a setup? We suspected, and that portion of it's still under investigation. But uh, and was she high end? Uh, not that I know this world all that well, but he had, we're talking about three thousand dollars. I got to be honest, an with expensive. You. Um, the, the prostitutes I see in the city of Utica, they need a retirement plan. I mean, uh, yeah, it's terrible. They, uh, they, they don't. I mean, they don't yeah. look too well. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. So where you might see in a New York City fifteen hundred dollars, you might see thirty dollars in Utica. It's that it's it's that bad. Yeah, uh, there's definitely a discount there. I mean, uh, there is, yeah. and God forbid if uh, you've participated, you you want to you probably want to see a doctor. Oh, uh, absolutely. So the gentleman uh, comes into Utica and allegedly. Uh, participates, somebody mysteriously comes crashing through the door and tries to rob him. He shoots and kills the guy. Yes. Uh, You're not going to charge him. This is self-defense. Well, here's what we did. We sat down with the – we had a briefing with the two investigators that had the case. We had members of uh, the district attorney's office there, and based on their review, our review, you know, we made a joint determination that we did not at this time have enough to make an arrest for – uh, you know, for a murder, um, we felt there was a lot of evidence that was corroborated by the the prostitute that yeah, yeah. Uh, that you know backed up the story. But uh, there's still forensic evidence out there that needs to be examined. And at any point that it looks like uh, it may be a homicide, we'll charge them. Okay. But at this point, you now based on the information we have, um, let me ask you. And I, I I've just got this will be very quick. And sure. I, this is kind of really out there and hypothetical. Sure. But uh, a guy's driving. Um, and uh, he commits, uh, uh, he hits somebody, the person dies. Um, he's driving illegally. He's speeding. Yes. Um, but you don't really believe the speeding caused the uh, caused the actual death. It probably would have happened if he was going the speed limit. Uh, but he's charged with vehicular homicide. What is any different here where the person actually is conducting, conducting business that's nefarious mm-hmm. and it ends up resulting in a death? Could that be um, – are you following my leap there? Uh, I, I know um, the, the usual scenario we hear is that um, uh, someone has ingested alcohol, not to the level of what they feel is impairment. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they get into an accident. Next thing you know, they're being charged with um, some type of vehicular manslaughter charge. Um um, you know, the, everybody has a different tolerance to alcohol. Right, right. Um, I, I will just say this much. The state limit is the legal limit. Sometimes right. what we feel we can tolerate. You know, right, we really can't. We really can't. Uh, I appreciate the update here. Yeah, sure. uh, we'll thank get more guys. today, I'm assuming. Uh, Chief, thank you so much. And uh, Sergeant as well. We can appreciate I just say it. one thing? Yes. I yes. want to uh, give a lot of thanks to uh, Nottie County Sheriff's Department and the uh, Volunteer Fire Department from Clayville last night. Uh, for helping us uh, recover the other body. Um, it, it seemed like uh, you guys worked. It was a very uh, positive group effort. That's happening a lot today. It is. It has to be. And then on top of my own personnel, I mean, they worked around the clock, Mike included here. I mean, they did a phenomenal job. And, uh, you know, we developed a lot of information very quickly. Uh, what happens from here? What can we expect today? Uh, Mike, what do you think? Well, hopefully the medical examiner can put, uh, we've asked to put a rush on the identification of the bodies, one for the family and two for transparency of the investigation. So um, if we get the identities, I think we'll release those. And we haven't really had a chance through the world with what's going on to sit down with the family. Um, as soon as we can get kind of yeah. get a conglomerate effort with them, we're going to release all the details of the deaths. Um, I think there's some things that might be a little bit interesting that have come out with oh, respect okay. to previous deaths you know so. all right and uh and, and chief really quickly uh you said that clayville is that where the body was discovered or can you disclose that at this time yes okay. uh, right off main street in clayville all right uh, park um and one thing i know that uh just quickly before we let you go um you you really feel that people stuff shows up on social media um there's a there's still a decency and a respect there's still a family out yes. there uh do you want to just briefly talk about that you know, the, the video that we get from both businesses and residential um, residents always is very helpful in our investigations. When they put it out uh, on social media, it, it's dis- disrespectful to the family members of the deceased because yeah. of the fact that we haven't a lot of times 
give them the full details of what happened to their loved one because right, right. it's still under investigation. There's other work that needs to be done. And they're seeing it on Facebook, yeah. That's, which, is, uh, which is pretty tough. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys, thank you, uh, thank you for the communication and for what you guys do. We really, yeah. really appreciate it. Nobody's saying don't come in. <laughs> He's We're like, yeah, like... I'm going to be going to away on a trip. And, okay. Uh, all right. Sure. We'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> uh, we'll uh, we'll speak with Nick, but also this meteorologist in Rochester who has been fired after using a, and this involved Dr. Martin Luther King. It was a park named after uh, Martin Luther King, and it was a racial slur that was used in the description of the of the park. Okay, I'm going to, yes. You know, Bill loves to do this thing where it's like you just react on the air. So I have I not seen I, it. They, I haven't either. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's something to be said for initial reaction. Okay. I, I want you to react naturally. Yeah. All right. Not that I don't feel you two are, are great actors. Oh, <laughs> you guys are good. Uh, Thank well, you. Really, Thank really you. good. I try. But I love the re- real reaction to get your natural reaction. Okay. Yeah. Right, well, we'll see. I am very shocked by this. Out- wow. wow. Outrageous. I am outraged. <laughs> I don't think it was that bad. Yes. Um, anyway, we'll uh, get their natural reaction to this coming up. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm shocked that this guy has been fired. It is shameful that he's been fired. All right, I two, believe. Can I just two things quickly? Uh, Jervis Public Library in Rome opening at 11, and we just got Hamilton Central is now closed. Okay. Updates so, at WBX everybody, everybody else is basically on a two-hour delay that we have mentioned. We'll give you an update on those coming up in a second. In studio right now, uh, Ryan Obernesser and Christina D'Amico. Um, did I say that right? Did. Most people don't. Um, I did it by mistake, but um, <laughs> just for the record, I'll never, I'll never get it right again. I'm sorry. D'Amico's a lot easier than Obernesser. It is, but I, the Obernesser, well, that's a, a name that's been around, uh, both names. I, uh, we should both be able to pronounce those names. Anyway, you guys are the owners of OB Training and Sports Performance, and we have our big Radiothon, which is coming up, and it's just around the corner, and what are we doing? We're doing something special here. Yes, we are. We are doing a 28-day charity challenge. Okay. Uh, what does gym. that mean? 28 days. 28 days. 28 yep. days to, to get your health back in order. So okay. it's going to be, obviously, at the gym. We'll be training in sports performance. It'll be three days a week of our team training classes. So um, I don't want to call it a boot camp, but it's that similar setting as far as okay. it's going to be a higher intensity setting. So you want to take- die like you would a regular boot camp. So taking a, uh, taking a one, basically taking one month and just pounding away. And bringing yourself back to some normalcy. With some nutrition. With some nutrition yes, as so well. so you got to get two components of it. Um, and it involves giving money. How does all that work? Um, so Mr. Obenesser. For the 28-day we'll charity challenge, uh, what we're doing is donating 50% of all proceeds to the American Heart Association. Wow, that's health. awesome. Yeah, so the cost of the challenge is $200. So for every person who signs up, $100 of that that's great. is going directly to... Uh, donations. Uh, what a great uh, cause! That whole event, that whole weekend, and uh, and as we, you know, really work hard to raise money on the radio side. That's where this thing all started. It started with a guy who was uh, on his way to cover a high school basketball game, right? And uh, and he had a heart attack and uh, and died. How many years ago? Goes back. Well, we were, uh, we're in several forty third year now yeah. of the radio thon. Forty seven. Forty seven. Uh, yeah. So this is yeah. about fifty. So fifty years, so we're close ago. to fifty years. Oh, wow. So, yeah. uh, all right. How can people get involved and uh, and sign up? A couple ways. So you can contact us. So you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, um, email info at obtraining dot com. Phone number three one five seven six five six three three two. Okay, that'll be probably the easiest ways. Yeah, Facebook's probably the best option. All um, right, we have different posts on there, uh, and there's actually links to the website to be able to go and sign up. Uh, we'll actually post that again today, and we'll pin it to the top of the page. So that way it's always there. So anyone who lands on the Facebook page will be able to go right to the registration so they can sign up for the program. So a great jump start, uh, 28 days, not only uh, you know really getting into a, to a great routine when it comes to exercise, but also what you're putting into your, into your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you probably don't recommend this. So. <laughs> not, That's well, not going to be part of the not, nutrition it is, plan. Not, not the top <laughs> you mean you, this isn't a diet Pepsi challenge? No, they have one of those, I think. Don't they? <laughs> yeah, it's do, it don't uh, don't get scurvy or don't, uh, okay. uh, might drink it too much of it. <laughs> okay, I just back to the scurvy. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, but I want to just say too that the way you the program, there, right? I do, yeah. and it's really helped me immensely, and it's just a really nice community of people there. 
these guys make it really easy to not only get into shape, get your lifestyle back on track, but to do it more long term as yeah. opposed to just a quick fix and then you're right back to where you were. Uh, all right, again, for people to contact, money, half of everything raised is going to the Radiothon. One more time, Facebook is probably the best way. Facebook, yep. OB right. Training and Sports Performance on Facebook. Uh, email info at obtraining.com. Okay. Um, but just Facebook's easy. It's all right, easy. and let's get an update as we go along to see how you guys are doing. And we could even interview a few people that are participating. And then, yeah, of, of course, course, when we do the Radiothon, we'd love to have you in when you make your presentation. So, yeah. all right, cool. Thank you, guys. Thanks. I appreciate well, it. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Uh, I want to go to anything else you want to add, Andrew? You're... No, I'm good. You look like you just saw a ghost. Uh, standing <laughs> by right now is Senator Joe Griffo. I want to go to Joe. Good morning, Joseph. Good morning. Good morning, Billy. How are you? Listen, I just want to tell you, they say this minority leadership position drives you to drink, and uh, I hope you're going to be okay. Well, I tell you, it's a situation. Uh, going to be challenging, uh, but... Uh, leader planning its decision. Dependency is a very serious issue. It is. And, I know. Uh, we applaud him for taking control of that and for setting an example for others who may be uh, facing this and uh, need to deal with it. It's tough to deal with visually, let alone in a public uh, arena as he is doing right now. But hopefully well, that will serve as motivation to others. Well, let's talk about it. Um, and, I, and I understand that we are we are sympathetic to people who have any bit of dependency although and and i have to say that alcohol is up there on the list as one of those they came out with the the most dependent drugs right around the first of the year there was a a list that i don't know cdc or somebody put out and heroin is number one i was really surprised to find alcohol maybe number two or number three as being something that is uh, you become addicted to alcohol and and it just becomes very difficult to kick the habit and we've lost them you want to try them right back um, he oh, called us. Yeah. All right. Uh, I was surprised to find that alcohol is number two on the list. Here's a question for you, and, I, sure. and I'll ask Joe this question. Um, this is his second time. Um, uh, is this the right guy to have as your, as your leader right now? That's a good question. Uh, I mean, it's just a couple of years ago, and now he's, he's back. He's back is in. This, is this prompted by an incident? Was there an incident where people around him are saying you need to get help, or does he recognize it himself how bad I, I, to be honest with you I, I don't know the circumstances but it is kind of alarming to hear that someone with so much power and responsibility correct yeah and i hate to be the guy that's uh that's you know lighthearted about it you know saying to joe uh it'll drive you to drinking but um uh, but beyond that this is it's an elected official and yeah. uh, are there is if there's a problem and, and a problem to the point where you got to go and get help. Um, what incidents led to to this? Is it something that his constituents and the the rest of uh, New York, it was him being in a leadership position, would look upon and say um, this is a this is a problem? You know, we were just talking about fitness, right? And to draw an analogy, and this might be a little off, and I apologize if it is, but like you know, you sit there and you're like, oh, I'm twenty, thirty pounds overweight. I should do something. I yeah, should start yeah. walking. This is different than, you know, when you go to a facility for treatment like this. It's, like you said, it's usually prompted by an incident or series of incidents where yeah, you say, yeah. um, I'm not handling this well on my own. And it does beg the question, with that much power and responsibility, uh, at, at what point do we need to look at a new leader, I guess? Correct. And I wish him all the best, yeah. you know, and good for him for, for wanting to get this solved and the problem fixed. But this isn't like an easy job, I don't I think. think. We, I so. think we have him back. Uh, Joseph, uh, back on. I hope we have a better connection. Good morning. Yeah, we're on the throughway. Uh, the good news for you is that uh, we're halfway there, and we can still hear you on the radio. All right, well, that's a good thing. <laughs> Joe, yeah. what we're the talking about. The bad news is yeah. the connection is tough. The bad news is we <laughs> might. Uh, haven't you guys, I mean, this is the throughway for God's sakes. I can't believe we don't have great coverage on the throughway. That Brindisi was right after all. <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, Joe, I, I want to say, listen, this is his second time, and I understand uh, you're right. I, I made a joke and and saying to you that uh, uh, this could drive you to drinking. Um, it's a lot of pressure. I get it. But at the same time, this is his second time. Is there Does there come a point where you guys got to look and say, uh, Leader Flanagan, you're not the right guy for this job right now? Well, uh, you make a point, Phil, about... Uh question about leadership and the demands, responsibilities, and challenges. 
I think the problem we had here, and again, we have to be sensitive to this type of a dependency and also empathetic to the individual. The problem uh, here, I think the first time he did try to deal with this, he went into treatment and it was a very short program. He was more concerned about his professional obligations than his personal well-being. This time he did submit himself to a recognized protocol, an established facility that has a required 30, 31-day program okay. that will allow him to now establish himself to have done this right and to set himself on the right course. Obviously, if there's any other missteps or faltering, it's problematic, uh, relative yeah, yeah. to what you've indicated. But I think that's the difference this time. The last time he really didn't do it, in my opinion, from what I'm hearing, the way it could have and should have been done because he was more concerned uh, with his position and responsibilities and his own well-being. Did he do, was, it pub- time, was, it, was it public, Joe, the first time? It was public after okay. the fact. Okay, uh, afterwards. The, the, the question here is, and, and again, this is a tough thing because most people deal with this and it's being done privately, but when you're a public official, uh, you're dealing with this in a very public arena. He's on the front page of every New York sure. uh, newspaper, the, the Daily News, the Post. So it's, it's a difficult thing for an individual at, in its own right, and then when you exem- uh, exasperate that by the coverage, and recognize that he's a public official, so you have that. So I give him credit for his courage to allow that, and hopefully it will serve, as I said, as inspiration and motivation for those who need help to go get help. And uh, we're hopeful that this will uh, do what's right. It's going to require a lot of things after on his part, too. We have an excellent team uh, that we've assembled that will continue to work uh, in his absence. And uh, I'll do my best in fulfilling my responsibilities in this new role as well as uh, my current uh, role as deputy. Um, there's a, this, is a, this position, even though you're in the minority, is a, it's a lot of work, Joe, right? You can tell me about it, Bill. Uh, yeah. I haven't been off the phone since last Friday when they started, literally, over the whole entire weekend. And uh, there are a lot of decisions. Unfortunately, we are making that transition from majority to minority, too. So that complicates and exasperates this even further. So, uh, yeah, this has been a very uh, demanding, challenging, uh, arduous experience. Okay, and I, and I want to ask you this. Is there an incident that led to – is there a straw that broke the camel's back – and if so, um, is it something the public is entitled to know? Well, I think uh, it's a combination of factors. Uh, I'm not sure what goes on in his personal life. So I know his personal life, I think he is going through a separation and divorce uh, and also uh, the, uh, the demands and responsibilities of the job. And as I indicated, he had a major shift in power and change. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people will be laid off, unfortunately, as a result of this. The way we govern in Albany is terrible. And, you know, we've talked about this on your show. I need, we, we need a lot of fundamental reforms, similar to even what they do in the federal government. Uh, right now, it gets down to the pettiness of who goes to what office. Mm-hmm. Not only on seniority, it's basically uh, you get a big space if you're in a majority. You get two rooms if you're in a minority. So it's pretty uh, childish type of uh, behavior, but uh, both parties are responsible and culpable in that sense. Uh, we should change those rules and make it different. As a, but as a result of that, a lot of people now will lose uh, jobs because there's such a sure. different proportion. In fact, even on committees, Bill, in some cases, the Republicans will, not only, will now only have one member on a committee. Uh, that's pretty crazy when you think about it because uh, these committees are important in the elements of establishing policy before it gets to the floor. Well, as we talked about it before, you take a, a school district that's in trouble. Uh, they reach out to Senator Griffo. You're in the majority, and oftentimes you're able to come up with uh, come up with the money to be able to to rescue them. That's going to be a lot more difficult now being outside the majority. That is true. We'll be able to make a case on merit, and we're hopeful that we can prevail. But in the past, we were able to just go identify uh, the funding source, uh, bring the problem forward, and New Hartford was a perfect example last year, and resolve the issue, and, and rightly so, uh, because you do have some problems, uh, economic problems and challenges that, school districts and communities are facing that are not of all their own doing, but because of extenuating yeah, circumstances. Yeah. Uh, Joe, and I, I know this is a, this is a tough question, but uh, I, I feel it's worthy of, uh, of asking. Uh, you guys just lost, uh, you got your, your butts kicked here. Um, the Democrats now have a pretty decent majority. Um, and this happened on Flanagan's watch. Um, do you believe that this problem impeded his ability to guide the Republican Party properly, the Senate properly through this last election? 
you know, that's something I would leave to clinical people. I'm not sure what was taking place during that time, but I know that they have an excellent campaign team in place. Yeah. You have to do a, a real post-mortem assessment as to what went wrong, Bill. Was it a high level of turnout? Was it an anti-president factor? Was it the candidates that were selected? Was it a lack of resources that maybe they needed? Was it the messaging? So to me, and I've advocated for this, we need to get a realistic and uh, come to grips with perspective as to truly what yeah, yeah. caused the issue and then determine uh, what is done differently. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, though, we've talked about this one party control with one region domination. A lot of people are going to have an eye opening experience here in upstate New York in, uh, in the next few weeks. I, uh, I, I totally agree with you. Um, it's not going to be good for us. However, let me propose this to you as my last question. I know you're on the road. We've gotten good coverage. Uh, you're, you're in a good stretch here, by the way. Um, all right, because uh, we're going by the Orsville Shrine. All right, well, that'll do it. There's, uh, there's <laughs> divine, divine, off. Some intervention. divine intervention going on there. All right, so the diff- there is a big difference between a Democrat in, uh, in, in the Bronx and a, and a Democrat in, in upstate New York. Um, they still live here. They still, uh, the values are completely different. Even a Democrat will look at some of the things that come out of that assembly in New York City and say, what is, that's just crazy. So isn't there some hope when something comes up, like, for instance, micro-stamping? Is there hope that there will be Democrats in upstate that can kind of form the same type of coalition you guys were able to do before that, uh, that differentiates between upstate life and downstate life? Uh, my perspective on that is no, even though it was possible at one time, and it's, it's for a num- two reasons. First, they only have three members upstate, the Democratic Conference, and we've talked about that, remember? Yeah. That's, that's the craziness of this whole situation. Secondly, even the members from upstate now, the newest member that was elected uh, in uh, the Syracuse area, is very uh, liberal and uh, actually has talked about putting more controls on guns and things of that nature. So we'll have a conversation with the new member and hopefully uh, educate them and expose them to what uh, – uh, this could mean relative to economic consequences uh, beyond policy issues, which we also want to talk about, uh, I, I believe, in, in the Second Amendment and, and its responsible use sure. of, of firearms. So so I think, uh, no, I think that's more challenging this time, Bill, because of who got elected, uh, not only the numbers, but also the personalities. In two years, boy, we could be looking at uh, something that's far closer to California than we ever thought we were going to be. Hmm. Absolutely. And the problem is that they're going to do everything possible now to sustain this majority. And when they have a supermajority, as you said, and I talked about it, some instances we have one or two members on a committee, uh, which is terrible. Uh, this is going. That's why I say we need much more aggressive yeah. uh, reform in government. Uh, and But we're all guilty of that because nobody has done it, even sure. though some we've made some progress. Thanks to people like myself that have been going there saying this is nuts. we got to do this differently and better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh but I think it's, uh, they're going to do a number of things relative to what may sound like it's good government, like voting issues, same-day registration, things of that nature, public financing potentially. Things of that nature uh, will put them in a position to win, uh, continue to win. And then also they'll be in charge potentially during redistricting, and they will redistrict people out. So it's going to be uh, very challenging. There's still hope and opportunity. But uh, this is not uh, like if it was closer, yeah, I yeah. think it would have made it a little more uh, – People could see that light at the end of the tunnel. Now it's a long tunnel. The light's out there. But uh, what's their, what is the, the exact number uh, they have? Of, of... 40 to 23. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. That is just a blistering number. Um, boy. Uh, and you have a governor that's going to, he's ready to go. He is pushing his agenda, and he's not going to waste any time. Um, this is all going to start very, very quickly. It's going to be hard to turn this thing around. <laughs> Well, that's yeah. going to be the interesting thing, Bill, because they're all going to be throwing elbows because they all want to be out in front of one another. So yep. that might be the one thing we have to talk mm-hmm. about in the all future. Right. All right, Joseph, drive carefully. Thanks for the time. We appreciate it. Joe Griffo, state senator. We'll talk again soon. And, by the way, the current minority leader. Take care. All right, Joe, thanks. Uh, I will tell you, it's the one thing Joe said he didn't want. He told us. Uh, he said it's, uh, my parents and his parents are going through some uh, some health issues, and uh, there's a lot of responsibility there, and he wants to be with them. And he's just taking on a major, major responsibility. I have to say, though, I feel like with Senator Griffo being there as long as he has, uh, he kind of is our, uh, you know, 
the Obi Wan Kenobi, you're our only hope, the Princess Leia type thing, you know. <laughs> that that if anybody, you, you did not just go there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. if you know, oh, right. help us, Senator Griffo, you're our only hope. I mean, if I just feel like he's been there long enough that he could probably I'm just picturing have the respect. Joe in one of those brown coats. <laughs> uh, like, I'm in a uh, little hologram. Hey, hey Joe. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how you find yourself in the actual motion picture, but you're in it. You're in I it. I don't know. I took it too far. Ah, uh, you did. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk uh, with Nagel coming up in a second. The story of the meteorologist in Rochester who's been fired. I think you're going to be shocked, as shocked as I am. Um, I'd love you to grab Marcus Marcus Phillips, too, because I'd like his, uh, his take on this. I just think this is crazy that this guy got fired. We'll talk about it. It ain't pretty what happened. Uh, don't get me wrong. But we'll talk about it coming up at WIBX. Tuesday morning, we've had a long, long morning of school closings and delays. And, uh, and the breaks could be a podcast. Do we want to do a? Uh, do we want to do a rundown of the schools? Or we basically everybody? I think, I think there's a couple of the ship has sailed. Yeah, Canastota so. and Morrisville have gone from a two-hour delay to close in Hamilton and Hamilton as well. Everybody else, you're on your delay. You got your two hours. You got to sleep in or whatever else you do in Eagle. Good morning. Good morning. Um, before we get into the BIA, mm-hmm. I want to talk, if I could, about this meteorologist and get everybody's take. Okay. And I want to be able to go through this without someone calling up the radio station and saying, oh, I just heard, and, and this guy you have on there is racist because he doesn't agree with, with the, the, the fact that this meteorologist in Rochester was fired. So let me tell you how I went down. Um, I, I don't know how to do tell the story without using the word that he used. Okay. So, so Jeff and I plug our ears. Here, must. So wait. Is this uh, and I and I and believe me, I, I I I'm I have a real problem in this world where we you you can't say a certain word when you're talking about something, um, but you can say like the uh, the f word. Well, you, but you just said it. You really just said it because a word is only what it represents. When a word is spoken, it communicates a meaning to someone. Okay. And that is what's offensive. So if I can, can't can say the four-letter F word, but I can say on the radio F word, I have still communicated to you. The meaning of that the word. The meaning of it. Now, I'm not asking to say the F word. I'm no. just telling you I something. Just, I just it's screwed a, your take on that. doesn't matter It's all. a human thing, and I just think it's ridiculous mm-hmm. how far we've taken it today. Okay. Okay? That's all I'm saying. A uh, meteorologist in Rochester uh, at a news station was fired on Monday after the city's mayor and other viewers called for his dismissal for using what sounded like a racial slur during a broadcast. Well, t- and I and they have pulled the audio. I don't have the audio. So the mayor got involved. Too. Oh, everybody, oh and the NAACP, the national. Um, this is the national, the uh, the Rochester Association of Black Journalists got involved, calling for this guy to be fired. And his name is meteorologist Jeremy Cappel. Um, he appeared to use a slur in the middle of King's name. While the mayor wanted um, Capel out the job, he, he's saying he fumbled his words. So he tweeted out, I never, ever have uttered those words. He retweeted a story uh, by Bob Lonsberry, who's had his own issues out there, um, who's made a, an honest mistake and got away with it. But when he talked about, i got to find the actual quote, because I had the audio, and then it just stopped playing. But I believe he he used the the word... Um, the word with Martin Luther King Park. He had Martin Luther King blank park. And what he's saying in the word was, the word was an awful word, but it it was the word uh, coon. And it somehow ended up in Martin Luther King blank or Martin Luther blank park instead of King, I believe that word was used. Okay. So, um, oh boy. what he's saying is when he said it, when it came out of his mouth, what he's saying is it, he was struggling for the word and he misspoke, and that word had no meaning. It was just uh, some utterance that came out of his that came out of his mouth. I wish we could hear the audio yeah. because it wasn't as it wasn't as bad as it as it sounds when you hear the audio. And I and they just pulled it on me. Um, 
Uh, they didn't pull it with me in mind, just for the record. I'm, I'm sure they yeah, don't, want, trying they to don't want the audio out and anybody to, uh, to, to do it. So um, Martin Luther Blank Park. Okay, yeah, it says here he referred to it as Dr. Luther Coon King Jr. Park. Oh, boy. Yeah, you. Okay. That's a word salad. So the, the, what he's saying is I, I do not have a racist bone in my body. I have never used that word. It was uh, it was something that uh, I uttered just a, a sound that came out of my mouth, and it just so happened to be that word. It was not intended. It was completely coincidental. I And by the way, why would you do that? There's some logic to this. Why would you speak those words if you're uh, on TV knowing you, you're going to get yourself into a firestorm? So, I, so initially, the TV station supported him. They let it go. They felt it was a it was a stupid utterance, uh, not using a it wasn't even a word, and and they they didn't see it that way. But the the groups began to protest. They began to the mayor came out, and people were calling for him to be fired. And then ultimately, the station caved in, and they fired him. I guess my only thing is like, why in the middle of the name? That's why. That's why I'm kind of like questioning it a little well, bit. I don't think he intended to do he it. He did but, not intend to do it. But I'm, I believe him when he says he did oh, not boy, intend to is... do it. But it is a. It is, you know, I, we've heard people say the f word or the s word or things like that when they never intended to, and it just was a combination of sounds that just came out and it sounded like that. So, well, let me do we, Paul McCartney this. just did a song like that. Do we hold them to? But that was intentional. Yeah, this is not. Let me ask you this: Do you think if he said, I mean, how Martin Luther, effing Park, and actually said the f? Well, word, that has happened before, where where people you have. Think he would have gotten fired though. Melded sounds together yeah. that just came out, and it just coincidentally turned out to be a. Some sort yeah. of a swear word. Who, who was our weather guy who actually dropped an F-bomb? Uh, that was Matt DiNardo, and he's gotten a lot of play on that, by the way. Um, that never was on TV. Ah. That was they, – they recorded those updates. Uh, Super disappointing. He did a great that. job. <laughs> <laughs> he did a great job of getting a lot of publicity yeah. out of that and being on those those uh, blooper reels, but that mm. never aired, aired, I don't believe. Yeah. Um, I remember one that did air when I worked over at Rock 107. But, and, and after the morning show, they all voice tracked, which means you'd go in a studio and in about 40 minutes, you'd put your whole show together. You intro and outro the songs and it's all done on recording. And then you go and do your the other work they have you doing, probably working on another one of their radio stations. Uh, this person kept screwing up and got so mad that she started F-bombing. F this, F that. You know what I mean by F, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Fear. Okay. Uh, fear this, fear that. And and preaching. thought she deleted it, but didn't. And that entire two minute tirade oh, aired live on the oh. radio. Fired or no? No, no. Wow. All right. So, so the F word is different. different. Uh, the F word is different than than tying a racial racial slur to Martin Luther King. Let's just be honest with that. Yeah. So this, capital- but if his intent wasn't there, if yeah. if this was just sort of a combination of. Of 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 a blooper, of, of misspeaking, uttering the wrong consonants with the with uh, is is it fair to fire the guy? I, I my honest opinion is um, it, it's probably the best thing for the entire community of Rochester to break this off. Let this guy go on, and he probably gets another chance somewhere else. You don't think this tape's going to follow him? I think it will, but again, <laughs> if it's an honest mistake, I think people will recognize that. Yeah, yeah. But based on the backlash, I'm I'm not surprised, so, and I think it so, may have been appropriate. So, really? Uh, appropriate for the TV station to react to the backlash? Yes. Then the question is, is the backlash fair? Because here is a, uh, I want to read one thing. Uh, this is Jennifer speaking on whatever website this is coming from. Uh, she's just uh, uh, making a comment, a reader. Jennifer, I'm liberal as they come. This man mangled his words. It was an innocent mistake. We should not be overreacting like this. And Bill's point is we haven't heard it. 
I so know. The, the, the problem that I'm struggling with this mistake. is if I can hear him stuttering and stammering through that. Let's say he did. And, and what he says that he did is that he realized, oh, my God, the best thing for me to do is just roll over this and people won't even catch it. Mm-hmm. But in this day and age where everything's DVR and everything is it. It went, uh, it went viral. So I guess my question is, are we, have we become so overly sensitive that a mistake that actually sounds like it is something that is racial but wasn't and never was intended? Howard Cosell, look at that monkey run. Um, that caused a, a bit of a firestorm back in the early 1970s on Monday Night Football. But he didn't intend it. It was innocent. He never meant it. It wasn't something that was derogatory. He survived that without any problem. I'm not sure he survives it today. No. no. I don't think so. The, the only thing that would have saved So have him we there... reached this point where we are so hypersensitive and overreactionary? We are just overreacting to everything. Is that where we are today? And if so, boy, be careful. full of pitchforks. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> a couple of people that we want to get fired. Can, I, yeah. can I just tell you, like, so around here we have, I'm going to say it wrong, and the Polish community is going to look down on me for this, but it's Kopernik Park, Kaepernick Park, Kopernik Park, right? But if, if I'm it, watching. How is it pronounced? Is I, be, it I believe it's Kopernik. Kopernik. I believe if I'm watching the news and. I always the, say Kaepernick. I've never said Kopernik, so I'm. The, the anchor accidentally says Polak Park. I'm offended by that, even if it was a mistake. Right? And I don't think they meant it. If he said that, that's different than putting the the word that he used together. True. I think that he he just it just was consonants that were he was mangling and I, if the if that was the N word that he said, well, it'd be pretty hard to say how did you make a mistake and come up with the N word? Well, and the counter argument to that is, you know, for that word to just slip out is probably in its vernacular and, and used often. Correct. You know? So, do you think that the coon word is something that he uses often? I, he says he doesn't. I can't say for sure. Yeah. But, yeah. Also, too, it's how many people have been fired for maybe lesser things? So, you know, these people are saying, well, this person got fired. We've got to do something about it. There's pressure from all sides because of how many hold firings on, there on, have hold been. Hold on. That's Karen calling. Hello? Mom, I'm just talking about it. You're right. All right. My mother thinks I'm going to get fired. She says to stop. <clears throat> so let's change the conversation. She's always right. My mother's always right. She is. She predicted the last time I got fired. Can I just go to Twitter quickly? <laughs> this is this is the guy, Jeremy Cap. Yes. He says, you're out of your mind to think I would jeopardize my future the future of my family and career, and insert a racial slur against the greatest civil rights leader of all time. Hashtag ridiculous. Hashtag hateful. I agree. I, I hashtag agree with judgmental. Him. He also says, thank There's you, no- Will. There are many very notable cases of the exact same verbal slip, including ESPN's Mike Greensburg. He has Greensburg. I think it's Greenberg. Only he got to keep his job. I feel that if you apply a little bit of logic... There is no, in this day and age, there's nobody with any sense in the world at all that would insert that word as a joke, as a slur, in this day and age, and not understand that I'm going to lose my my life here over this. I hate to say It was a mistake. Based on the mayor coming out, you've got the community leaders. But that's NAACP. a little different now. So you're looking at it from the TV station standpoint. So uh, guess what? Maybe the conversation with him was, that, listen, we don't, we believe you, but we're under so much pressure. We right. have no choice. You brought, this mistake has brought such negative attention onto this business. We have no choice but to do this. We're very sorry, but this is, you know, and I'm sure that's probably the way they feel. Notice they didn't even react for the first two or three days to this. Right. So that's different dealing with the pressure. My question is, is the pressure in itself overreacting and i really think we are today i mean intent doesn't intent mean anything intent should be what it's about are you intending to hurt someone are you intending to insult or slander or say something horrific like some sort of a racial slur if you didn't have the intent and and you just made a mistake we've reached that point where people are overreacting to the point now where when someone says i don't have an a, a an ounce of history in my career, in my life, of ever being racist, of doing anything in public that is racist. This was a mistake. 
Are we to the point now where we won't even give anyone the benefit of the doubt just because we want to nail somebody? And uh, to me, that's uh, I think that's pretty scary mm-hmm. where we are right now. Uh, hold on. We'll uh, wrap this up with some beer. Thank you. And if we have enough, who knows what's going to come out of our mouths. <laughs> It could be anything. It could be anything. Nagel, oh, my God, I thought of you. Uh, well, we were texting back and forth. Uh, you were like, the game's over. This is terrible. Oh, yeah. This is terrible. And your Eagles, Stupid. well, they didn't They didn't pull it out. Yeah. They, they, uh, they, they backed in. They backed in. <laughs> wow, uh, I couldn't you. believe that, Nagel. That game was just uh, And not just, not just did it go, like, wide right or wide left. I mean, as a Bills fan, I know what that's like. Mm-hmm. This hit the uprights, then came down and hit the crossbar. And then and could the and I've, I've seen a lot of that happening this year where it bounces in and right. it would have been good. Yeah. This bounced out. I hit the ceiling. Yeah, my I'll wife, bet you did. my wife yeah. thinks I'm insane. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we found the audio. Like, you want to hear this, meteorologist? And you make your Thank decision. You, we found the audio, and here we go. Listen to this. Overall, it was great. This is the way it looked out at Martin Luther King Jr. Park. The yeah, ice rink at the Zamboni machine now. I right, play it again. You can hear it. Stop it for a second. You you hear him. I think he just did a instead of king. It was just uh, he was he was leading on and he just misspoke. Nagel disagrees, but we'll hear it again. Listen to this. Overall, it was great. This is the way it looked out at Martin Luther King Jr. Park. The ice rink at the Zamboni machine out. He has been fired for that. Nagel. I don't know. I'm I'm fifty fifty on it. Whether or not it's a word that he uses, obviously he wasn't using it intentionally. But I think yeah, that the no. perception with the community is that it's a word that he uses. It's and- such a tiny little speck. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I'm a fifty fifty two. I do think the the station made the right move to move on. I'm not saying he did it on purpose. I'm not saying he's a totally bad guy or a racist. Yeah, I'm totally against it. What do you think? It's hard. To, I read all the time. Sometimes I misread things. You're reading yeah. from a prompter. Uh, Nagel, I know there's stuff you want to talk about, and I'm out of time. I uh, hear you. Come back tomorrow. You don't leave till Thursday. Come on. Come in. Yeah, we'll I'll see come you tomorrow. tomorrow. All right.